Welcome to Monday and welcome to Countdown Day here on the channel and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 Transformers with space alt modes. That's going to be our topic this time around in the latest Got Bot Counts Down. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts. Your very overheated host here today. It's pretty warm in my neck of the woods. Um, Dennis Moulton, AKA Godbot, as always. Please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe while you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for as well as all my social media links, all that in the description down below. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member, baby. Um, and the topic today is going to be the top 10 Transformers with space alt modes. And initially, I was thinking in terms of like shuttles and spaceships. By the way, if you hear a fan, you hear a fan because like I said, it's really really warm here today uh so yeah like i was saying we have these kind of space alt modes which i initially thought would really sort of be limited to shuttles maybe ufos but it did expand beyond that some of the entrants here i'm a little shaky about but there is a justification and a precedent for it but of course before we get to the actual list what have we got to do that's right we got to do the honorable mentions first and we have five honorable mentions by the way all of the voting was real, real close this time around. And I mean real close this time around. I'll talk about that later on. But for the honorable mentions, we have Galaxy Shuttle. We have Movor. And if you don't know who Movor is or you don't remember him, you might know him as, I think, Shuttler was another name he went by. He was basically a redeco of the G1 Blastoff or any blast off really, and form part of Ruination or Baldigus, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I kept him separate. I could have lumped him with blast off, but I didn't because I said, you know what? He's his own thing and his own character. Uh, so Galaxy Shuttle, Movor, Scourge, uh, because he's a space submarine boat thing. Uh, Bayverse uh, Soundwave, specifically when he turns into a satellite, I really wanted him to get more votes than he did. Though he did get a, a few. I thought he was going to make a good push to actually get on the list, but he didn't quite get there. I think it was um, Revenge of the Fallen when he was the, sh the satellite. And Fortress Maximus. Again, I thought Fort Max would probably make... Once the votes started for him, I thought he would probably make the list. He did not. All of those, once again, Galaxy Shuttle, Movor, Scourge, um, uh, Revenge of the Fallen Soundwave, and Fortress Maximus. All of those honorable mentions, none of them at all have a place on the list. So who did? Well, we're about to find out when we start off with number 10, a first. Now, to be fair, as we go through here, I actually don't have plastic representations of all of these, so this will be one of those countdowns where we probably defer to, uh, maybe I'll use pictures or something, you know, like a way to identify who it is we're talking about. Just so we're clear this time around, we're going to try and do this one fairly quickly because most of this will be pretty self-explanatory. Coming in at number 10, perhaps one of the most obvious, but also one of the newest characters, arguably, by way of this. That's right, number 10 is the Ark itself. I don't think it would have counted as necessarily a Transformer or a character before Kingdom, but now that the Ark has an alt mode, very reminiscent of the last Autobot, it does have a robot mode, it, its alt mode now is, in fact, a space shuttle, a spaceship, a, a space-fearing thing, obviously, yeah. You know what, the Ark, by way of Kingdom, takes the number 10 slot. Number nine takes us to victory and this. Yeah, Star Saber. I don't think anybody would argue that Star Saber, if anything, is like a space ship within a space ship. Arguably, some might say he's more plain than ship. I, I, I 
don't really buy that because he does a lot of going around space and he's so stylized that if anything he's like a space plane if he's not actually a space shuttle. Though I do defer to space shuttle and I think most people would probably do the same. And for that reason he took the number 9 slot. Now number 8 takes us in a completely different direction because the alt mode here isn't a spaceship, it isn't a space shuttle, it isn't a UFO. In fact, it's something you might not necessarily expect, but it makes total sense. It's this. Yeah, baby, Unicron himself. Guy turns into a planet. I mean, you don't get much more space alt mode than a planet. A planet has to exist in space. So, yeah, Unicron. Not the sort of alt mode that I would have thought ha thought of, but because I usually leave these questions very widely open to interpretation, I can't deny that a planet definitely falls within the realm of space alt mode, and for that reason, Unicron takes the number 8 slot. Coming in at number 7 is really this guy, but with a caveat. That's right, Armada Jetfire, man. And, like, I support this. I get this. I understand why he would have it. As a matter of fact, I think of all of his modes, I think that his actual alt mode as a shuttle is his best. I like it. It's chunky. It's hefty. It looks good. It feels good in the hand. It's robust. I like the Armada Jetfire mold. That being said, there were a couple of votes that came in for the War for Cybertron Jetfire. Um, and a couple that came in for G1. And when I asked about the G1 specifically, and I guess it applies also to the War for Cybertron one, I said, whoa, 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 he's more plain than, you know, space-faring vessel. And they said, hey, but what about that one time when Optimus had him go, like, right up into space, and I can't remember what it was in G1, and he was, like, throwing some Decepticon device that was going to explode, and, like, Optimus threw it into deep space, and it blew up. But in that moment, at that time, he did go in space. He was more than a plane. I have to give credit where credit is due. So I took those couple of votes, and there weren't many, but I took those couple of votes for Jetfire slash Skyfire, and I rolled them in with the Armada lad here. Whether you go with G1, War for Cybertron, or Armada, that he was able to take the number seven slot. Now, number six is a very similar type of thing to the last one we had, in that it's really more of a plane, I would think, than a space-faring vessel, but there have been instances where this plane did operate in space and therefore probably does count as a space-faring vessel. Who am I talking about? This guy! Yeah, baby, Cyclonus. I don't think I would have thought of Cyclonus as a space alt mode, but you know what? Yeah, space plane. Why not? It makes sense, and he did, in fact, fly through space in that alt mode. There is precedent for it, and I can't deny it. It's right there for everybody to see, and enough people felt that he had a space alt mode that he was able to take the number six slot. Ah, yes, where are we? Where are we? We are once again at that most coveted of spots, the halfway mark. And at the halfway mark, we have a very fitting entrant. I think it was foregone conclusion that Blastoff was going to be on this list. I thought he was going to be higher than the halfway mark, but he's not. The guy's a shuttle. Even when he's an arm, he still looks like a shuttle. Everything about Blastoff screams shuttle. Except for that one Combiner Wars mold when he was a plane. But even that was rectified by becoming a shuttle. Blastoff's a shuttle. It's as simple as that. And enough people think of him as a shuttle that he was able to take the number five slot. Now at this point I want to note something as we enter the top four. Four, three, two, and one. Each of them is separated by only one vote. Usually the top couple kind of really tear away from the pack and have a lot of votes that come in for them and not this time around. Any one of these four could have taken the top spot. It was a close race right from the beginning of voting for the top 
four. And this is how it panned out. Like I said, each of these entries are separated by just one vote. Coming in at number four is the little green UFO himself. That's right, it's Cosmos, man. Cosmos. Um, yeah, I mean, the epitome of a space alt mode. Also the epitome of, like, the least robot in disguise. That might be an idea for another top ten one day. The least robot in disguise, Transformers. But, yeah, undoubtedly, I mean, the guy exists in space, basically. He had to make it on the list, and he did so at the number four slot. And coming in at number three, we have Omega Supreme. Now, to be fair, a couple of votes came in specifically for animated Omega Supreme, but I lumped them in with regular Omega Supreme. Here's the th like, here's where I guess the confusion sort of fell and why I lumped them together. Some people said, I want to vote for Omega Supreme, but really it's only his arms that turn into a shuttle, the rest of him isn't really a space mode, it's a base, so I don't know if it counts. So, just to kind of cover myself, I'm also going to say animated, because we know animated became a shuttle, or a spaceship, if you will. And I said, you know what, both of them will count. I will take, I will take votes for Omega Supreme, whether it's animated or whether it's G1, and I'll put them both together, because guess what, Omega Supreme can fly in space in either continuity, in either iteration, and both of them are kind of iconic representations of Omega Supreme that, yeah, you know what? It counts, baby. Omega Supreme took the number three slot. And you got to believe that the guy at number two really, really would think that he deserves to be at number one. Why? Because I'm talking about Mr. Magnificence himself. That's right, it's Skylinks. Yeah, the guy's a shuttle. There you go. Enough said. No more needs to be said. The guy is a shuttle. Everything about him screams shuttle, the epitome of shuttle. More shuttle than a shuttle. Um, almost number one, but not quite there. Almost, but not quite there. Though I'm sure that Skylinks would think that he deserves to be there. Undoubtedly, one of the best known and most iconic shuttles in all of Transformers. The uh, War for Cybertron Commander Class version even has, like, NASA um, I, tampographs on it. I mean, you can't get more recognized as a space shuttle than that. And here we are at the top spot once again, separated by one vote from the others. Four, three, two, one. Each spot separated by one vote. Such a close, close race. So who actually took number one, if not Skylinks? Well, how about this guy? That's right, baby. It is Astro Train. Arguably, Astro Train might be the first space shuttle that showed up on the Transformers G1 program. Now, that could be wrong. I didn't go and I didn't check it. Maybe Cosmos came first. I really don't recall, to be honest with you. Um, but if he wasn't first, he was certainly one of the first. And he had kind of a uh, well-known presence. I'll say, I don't want to say big role, but certainly well-known presence and part of an iconic scene in the 86 film itself. Yeah, it, it, it's undeniable. Yes, the guy turns into a train, but when you have Astro in your name, then you know you got to turn into a shuttle and enough people remember him as one great shuttle that he was able to take the number one slot. And there we have it once again, 10 down to 1. And there were a lot of characters that didn't make it on the list or in the honorable mentions, but still got votes. Trypticon, for example, Devcon, uh, Phaser and Blastmaster, Topspin, Snapdragon, uh, Brainstorm, Grandis, uh, who else here? Sentinel Prime, specifically the Titans Return Sentinel Prime. Grand Max, uh, who, who else? Um, I, I'll say Bayverse Megatron, though I thought he was a plane, but I guess it could be a space plane. Transformers Prime Megatron. Again, though he's a plane, he did operate in space. Um, uh, Farak. Um, Payload. Payload. 
Payload is the little lad that actually came with Cosmos, ironically. Let me know which space-faring space alt mode transformer is your favorite and did he make it on the list or not. I appreciate you guys coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member, baby. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us, and don't forget that somehow, someway, each and every single solitary day, you, you right there, you do make a difference, man. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights, don't be a stranger, at the stop motion premieres, or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.